Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Today I want to show you something that's a little bit different with card making. Um, we're not actually going to be using much in the way of paper and cardstock. We're going to be creating a beautiful autumnal card using your laminating machine. Now I've been out foraging, I've got some gorgeous seasonal leaves, um, branches, seeds that have all come out of my garden. Um, so I love the colours that are around this time of year and I want to capture those. Now just a quick note because lots of you ask when I do anything with laminating pouches is do they not continue to disintegrate within the laminating pouch? Um, do they lose their colour over time? And so far the answer is no. I did this about a year ago, you'll probably find that somewhere on my YouTube channel as well where I did another project doing very similar and the colours still remain. There's a very very slight bit of fading but no more than you'd get with cardstock sitting uh, out in daylight anyway so certainly if you're giving this to somebody it will be um, perfect for the next six to twelve months no problem now I'm going to just put these to the side for a moment because we're going to start off with adding some background color and pattern to our laminating pouch so the ones I choose um, I will try to link them down below for you um, but these ones are actually matte on one side and glossy on the other, which gives me the option of using either. Now I think today to keep the um, colours really nice and vibrant, we're going to focus on the glossy being the front of the pouch. So I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to crease along the fold there. That's going to help us allow to work on this section first of all. So I'm going to use alcohol ink because I know this will dry. You don't want to put anything wet through your laminating machine. And just a side note, my laminating machine is not an expensive one. I think it was about £15 from a um, local supermarket. I've had it for years and years. It really is. It just does the job absolutely fine. Um, so I'm going to use alcohol ink because I need any colour to be dry. You don't want to put anything through here that is wet. Of course, electrics and water do not mix. So that's why I thought I'll go down the uh, alcohol ink route rather than adding any other colour. And if I imagine this is my open card base, so this bottom portion will be the front of my card, the back portion will, or the top portion will be the back. So I want to focus my design on here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of work out, if I imagine, I might make a bookmark as well, so if I imagine my card is going to be around this area, I will trim it all down to suit later. So first thing I'm going to do is just pop a little bit of yellow in the background there and then use some uh, clear alcohol blending solution just to move those about a little bit. Now I'm not looking for a lot of colour, I just want a little bit of um, a little bit of a background shade there so that everything stands out really nicely. Now because it's alcohol ink that will dry exceptionally quickly so I'll give that a few minutes. So that's almost dry now, it's got a little bit of alcohol left to burn off as you can probably just see the patch in the middle there. Um, but I can carry on and do some more things to this while that's drying. I also want to add a sentiment to my card. Now I'm actually going to add two. I'm going to add one stamped inside and then I'm going to add one on the outside as well to build depth and texture. So I'm going to make this into sort of a, like a Thanksgiving card. So I'm going to have the word thanks uh, written at the side and then I'm going to have, when you stop and look around, life is pretty amazing. So it might be give thanks or something like that, I'll write. I'm going to place this in the center, roughly in the center of my yellow there. Let's just bring that down. So I think about there. Now I'm going to stamp this, and bear in mind that's going to pull on there, with stays on ink. So this is again an alcohol ink, or rather a solvent ink, sorry. So that will dry on any surface. The stamp I'm using is from my textures collection. If it's still available, I will link it down below. So with my stays on, I'm just going to press that onto there. You can hear that sort of sticking to the surface. Lovely. Now I'm going to repeat that a few times to get a nice deep colour. There we go. I'm happy with that. Now, as you notice, the first impression was quite pale and I want to use that. I've got some additional um, just stamps and such here that I'd like to use 
but I don't want them to be the focal point. So I'm just going to scatter these about. These are from my Mariposa collection. Again, if they are still available, I will link them. And I'm just going to pop them around, not in any particular order. And they will just be in the background. Now while, that is, now while that's all still in my stamping platform and it's secured down because I have a sticky mat under here, I'm actually going to continue to use uh, the stamping platform for now just to position all my embellishments. So I've got some dried gypsophilia here. Now you don't want anything that's too bulky, so I wouldn't add a lot of this, just a few tiny little seeds. Um, I've got some beautiful leaves in dark colours. Um, I've got some, these red leaves I thought were absolutely stunning. Now I've bought these in and I've had them in for about 24 hours, so they have started to dry and curl up a little. If you find that they're too dry, you can give them a slight mist of water and that will just help to uh, loosen them up again. So I'm going to start positioning these uh, coming out from the sort of the edge and coming in. I really love these purple ones. So these are going on first. I think that leaf is a little bit, I love that leaf, but I think it's a little bit large for what I want, certainly for this project. So I'm going to press this one down. Also, don't forget to look at the reverse of your leaves as well. You may find that you like the reverse equally as much or even more than uh, the front. I'm going to trim any stems off if I can get away with it because stems are usually quite bulky. And lastly, a little bit of gypsophilia or uh, you might know it as baby's breath. I'm going to try and spread the flowers out and place them like so. When you're happy with everything, very gently place your um, laminating pouch the front down now this will be static so it's best to kind of roll it carefully and make sure that everything still stays where you want it nothing's folding in half nothing's covering your stamped image either so just checking everything there now because this is going through and it's very hot the laminating machine I want to like I say doubly ensure that I've got nothing in here peeking over the edge so I'm going to tuck everything into the edges I don't want anything burning once it's going through the machine I like to hold it up I like to hold it level and just be sure as it's going through that again nothing is peeking out of the edges once it grips on to some of them it's a little bit easier to just take a few seconds and move things that are poking out of the bottom press them in but you don't have too long for this now I often like to try to do, do full laminated cards front and back. Unfortunately, as I went through my laminating machine, this portion crinkled up, um, so it ends up like coming out like this. Um, a way to get round that is to pop some A4 paper or letter paper, just copy paper. Um, so just fold it in half and put it over the, the first edge of your laminating pouch as you guide it through. Now I forgot to do that. Um, so I've just trimmed that. I'm going to trim this down a little bit more. Um, but as you can see, look at how vibrant those colors are. Absolutely beautiful. And just for comparison, in case you were wondering, this is what the matte side looks like. Now you may love this side. You might like that muted tone. Um, so all the colors have slight, a slightly more frosted look. Um, if you love that, that's fine, go, go with that one. Or I love how vibrant the glossy ones are. So uh, now because I've needed to um, trim this back down, I'm going to need to make myself um, a card base to pop this into. So I'm going to trim this down so that it's just the front of the card and I'm also going to make this bookmark while I'm here. So there's the finished card. I've simply cut myself a frame from the uh, from a card base. I've adhered that in there with some red liner tape. Um, you can see the difference there between the frosted and the glossy. I've uh, doctored myself a title as well from this uh, die set, from the textures die set. I actually had to use the word thank and then cut the other letters from um, elsewhere. So the uh, F-U-L is actually made up of 
simply it's actually a k a u and an l but i think it all works um and then as promised there is a bookmark as well to match um that could be an additional gift that's just inside the card or you can just keep it for yourself it seemed just a shame to waste um that laminating pouch and the additional um leaves and such that i collected now that's the difference between the frosted and the glossy you can really see the colors show up beautifully vividly with the um, gloss side but with the matte you get that vintage look so hopefully I've inspired you to create something today um, that's a little bit different hopefully you've got a laminating machine at home if not like I say they're really inexpensive to pick up anything else I've used in the web stamps and dies are linked down below and I'd love it if you could drop me a thumbs up on this video if you liked it take care everybody I'll see you again very soon